In a recent video, we discussed some of the more popular alternatives to Games Workshop products and weighed up some of their merits. This triggered what for this little backwater channel is, to be honest, an explosion of comments from enthusiastic viewers recommending various different games for me to try. Now, I'll be honest, some of those I'd never even heard of, some were on my radar and I'd just not got round to yet, but one of them drew a particularly close and keen interest from me. Battletech. Battletech? Battletech. <laughs> now, I mentioned this in that previous video, but I think it bears repeating because whether you are looking at Battletech because you're considering boycotting Games Workshop products, something I'm personally a little bit dubious about, or whether it's just a general need to expand your horizons and a general want to know what's out there, regardless of the reasoning, Battletech is the one game in particular that I just keep seeing coming up. And this isn't some kind of passing thing, there's a genuine mass exodus of 40k players moving to Battletech right now. Just take a quick look at the Battletech subreddit here, where you can see that the second pin post from the top is a primer that has been made for 40k refugees. And that primer is not just some casual little quick infographic either. It is absolutely stuffed with links to external resources, the likes of which I've never really seen compiled in a game before. So if that Battletech mass exodus is real, and I think we can see from the evidence that it probably is, that's got to be something worth talking about, right? So I want to try to get to the bottom of what the allure is. I want to try and figure out why it's specifically Battletech where a lot of 40k players seem to be going. And I want to know if this exodus and this renewed interest in Battletech is sustainable or whether it's just a flash in the pan. Before we get into too many micro specifics here, I think the best place to start is by looking at some direct comparisons between things that both hobbies offer, whether that's Warhammer 40k or Battletech, the stuff that they both do. So firstly, and perhaps easiest to identify is that in their purest form, both are miniatures games. Games where two or more players duke it out using tiny little plastic soldiers and measuring and rolling dice and having arguments until eventually one is declared the winner. And because of this, of course, both games come with the baked in sub hobby of miniature painting. And I call it a sub hobby, but that's probably not the smartest thing to call it because indeed for some folks, the painting is the draw and the playing of the game is very much a secondary thing or even might be something that they don't do at all. Both games have a solid 40 plus years of history behind them and they come with so much lore that for some people, at first glance at least, it might even look impenetrable. But thankfully that law is presented to us again in both universes through a series of novels, video games and additional media including stuff like audiobooks that makes it a lot easier to get into. And these additional forms of media can make a huge difference to some players in terms of how accessible they find games. I know for me personally nothing makes me happier than sitting down and absorbing myself in an audiobook at the end of the day. The added richness provided by this extra layer of immersion really makes a game seem more inviting, and that is something that both 40k and Battletech offer in droves. So we essentially end up with three main points. Both are miniatures games, both involve painting miniatures as a result of that, and both have a very rich and detailed lore that is presented through various different forms of media for you to consume. Now it's going to be pretty obvious to anyone watching this video that 40k is of course the more popular game and the easy assumption would be to say that that's because it does everything that Battletech does only it does it better. But would that assumption in the strictest sense be true? So what I now want to do is look at those very same commonalities, those very same things that make both offerings similar, but look at the differences in the way each game handles them. So let's begin now with what I think is the most glaring difference between the two, and that is the games themselves, how they're played and how they're distributed. Both games take the approach of offering a wide variety of ways to play. Where 40k is the most sprawling and detailed version of itself, it backs that up with the skirmish games Necromunda and Kill Team in order to allow players to get that same fix but with different play experiences, and I think that is very important. And Battletech does this too, but the delivery method is, well, it's pretty different actually. 
The most complex form of Battletech is Battletech Classic, which is designed generally to be played with a team of four mechs versus another team of four mechs, so it's a very low model count game. You may or may not have supporting units added into that as well, such as aircraft, ground troopers or tanks, but generally the miniatures count is still very low. When it comes to the more faster and relaxed version of Battletech, we have Alpha Strike, which weirdly was actually designed to allow you to play Battletech, which is an extremely complicated game, on a bigger scale. So their simplified, more relaxed and more accessible game is actually the one that's designed for larger miniature counts. Now it's still significantly smaller than Warhammer, an entire army is still going to be nowhere near as big, generally speaking, as a Warhammer army. Alpha Strike does away with things like the hex board and instead favours a traditional gaming table with the kind of scenery that you're used to seeing, albeit in a different scale. And it also features a massively simplified rule set to allow people to resolve things faster and with less mental workload. Guerrilla Miniature Games actually has a fantastic video on Alpha Strike. It has a whole series of videos on Alpha Strike, in fact, so I will link this one in the description below, but if you want to check them out, please do, because they are a fantastic channel. So the obvious difference here is that regardless of which format you're playing, the model counts in Battletech are pretty much always going to be lower. Now the idea here is that players have more time and indeed can assign more money to collecting multiple different forces in order to offer them different flavours of gameplay. Something that is very difficult to do with Warhammer 40,000. Just having one army is extremely expensive. If you want to have two or three, the amount of money and the amount of time you'll need to get them painted is pretty serious. And that said, this is not all in Battletech's favour. Whilst Battletech does come with big robots and tanks and troopers and aircraft, the variety pretty much stops there. As a 40k player, you might be used to seeing monsters, aliens and demons on the table and enjoying the amazing detail of those organic miniatures. But if you're a Battletech player, your variations are basically going to boil down to different iterations of boxy thing with guns. And this is of course absolutely fine if that's what you like, but you just have to bear in mind that if you're into those more organic shapes then you're probably going to end up picking a second game up so that you can play with miniatures that look like that. And the differences don't just stop at how you interact with the games. Battletech and 40k also have extremely different approaches in how the games are served to you. 40k's codex and supplement system has long been the subject of a lot of the negative criticism that they receive, with a lot of players feeling like they really need to grab those books in order to be able to functionally play the army at all, and with some people even criticising that some of those books just feel like straight up forced DLC. And of course, Battletech does have a system of supplements. Periodically, books are released that have new mechs in them, new lore in them, new weapons in them, new technologies in them, and all that kind of thing. But none of it is essential to play the game. Because a lance, which is in-game speak for a squad of mechs, it doesn't really get any benefits based on where it's from or how it's painted. It's just about the mechs that are in that lance. So you choose mechs that you have access to, and if you want access to additional mechs, you can pick up those books when you feel like it. And if you're not the bookish type, then as a 40k player, you're probably quite used to Battlescribe. But whereas Battlescribe is very imperfect, for example, not giving you things like the stratagems for your army, and really just focusing on stat lines and points costs, force distributions and things like that, Battletech has an alternative called Mega Mech, which gives you everything that you need in order to play the army. It's a complete and comprehensive app full of all the information you're ever going to need. And what's crazy about this is that Catalyst, the company who owns Battletech, they actually work with Mega Mech. It's not like the situation with Battlescribe where that's an app that Games Workshop really wants to put in the ground. I mean, it is truly a wild world when gaming companies are actually taking steps to make their games more accessible. And again, this open and sharing attitude from Catalyst isn't a fluke either. Battletech is a miniatures agnostic game. That means that you can use any of the following items to carry out your games of Battletech. These 3D printed mechs. Official plastics or third party metal miniatures. Official cardboard standees. 
These jelly beans purchased from a lovely cafe in Droidwich. Your preferred brand of cheese and onion crisp. And again, this isn't a fluke. I'm here on the official Battletech site now and I scroll to the bottom and look what I see. An advert for an actual third party company making metal miniatures for their game. They're advertising other companies on their own website. Okay, so we spent quite a bit of time going over the different approaches the companies take to the game itself. This next topic is mercifully going to be a lot quicker to discuss. We're going to talk briefly about the painting. And in short, Battletech's painting is just, well, it's simpler. And part of this is by nature of the fact that they're just quite simple looking miniatures. But there is another half to this equation and it's a little bit more abstract to explain. In fact, I'll tell you what, this isn't a brag, but it is a really good example. So I will give it and hope it doesn't come across wrong. I posted the first mech I ever painted into the Battletech subreddit. It was this bull shark and I just had been using it as a warm up piece. I'd been painting it between other miniatures over the course of the week, just popping little bits of time into it here and there. And by the time it was finished, it probably had about four hours in it. Now it's far from the best thing I've ever painted, but it's, you know, not any slouch either. It's, it's certainly a bit above just base coats and washes, but it isn't the kind of paint job that for most 40K players would blow them away. However, what I really just was not ready for was the mass outpouring of positive comments in the Battletech subreddit. There were so many upvotes and people congratulating me on such a fantastic paint job. The Battletech community, because it is smaller, seems to have fewer painters really pushing the envelope in that field at the moment. And that for me, as someone who is a painter first and a gamer second, is really exciting. And of course, as a side effect of that, it does also mean there's a pretty good chance I'll be making some Battletech painting content at some point. Okay, so finally, what I want to discuss now is probably the most opinion-based part in all of this, the law. 40k law is without a doubt vast when you consider that the 30k history is also part of the same canon. You're talking about literally hundreds of novels to consume containing all of that rich and detailed past. And Battletech, much like 40k, has the paper novels and novellas, it has the audiobooks, it has the video games, it even has a cartoon, which I, again, did mention in a previous video, so I won't go into too much, but it's worth having a look for on YouTube, it's very funny. And what's more, those novellas and short stories, they throw them in with the boxed games as well. So you actually get a place to get started on the lore when you buy a box set, not just the game itself. How cool is that? In fact, if there's any noticeable difference between the two types of lore, it's probably that same one that I pointed out with the games themselves. You're gonna hear stories in Battletech of amazing mech warriors and their entourages and the battles that they fight in, but what you're gonna be starved for is any kind of contact with monsters, demons, and aliens, that kind of thing. Battletech deals with human conflict. However, if like me, you're a fan of the Imperial Guard and say the Gaunt's Ghost series, you're probably gonna have a really good time with the Battletech lore. The novels capture a very similar feel of desperate battles being won against the odds by a few people that are willing to go that extra mile. And they have, as I said, a really human and deeply connected feel to them, unlike some of the other 40k lore. I mean, both settings could certainly be described as both grim and dark. But the way that they handle that is, it's a little bit different. Battletech likes to address human conflict and as such deals a lot with the human condition. It likes to display, albeit in the limited way that the action genre can, a bit of sensitivity in its writing. Its characters will actually cry because of their bad choices instead of stoically turning their gen-hanced, perfectly chiselled cheeks to their moral responsibilities and getting on with their day. Now I challenge anyone to read the fighter pilot scene towards the start of Mercenary Star and not have a lump in their throat. It's pretty harrowing. And all of this is of course very refreshing. I'm on my second Battletech audiobook at the moment and if my Kindle and Audible accounts together are to be believed, I've consumed well over 100 40k novels previously. It's safe to say that I'm pretty au fait with 40k's lore. 
And I'll be honest, I didn't think it could get any better than Gaunt's Ghosts and the Horus Heresy. I thought that was the pinnacle. However, I cannot deny that these first two Battletech audiobooks that I've listened to have delivered me things that I didn't even realise how much I was starved for. It has been an incredible eye-opening experience trying fiction from a different universe with equal depth to that of 40k. And of course this is subjective, I warned that at the very start of the section. I have no qualifications by which I can objectively assess literature. But what I can say is that if you want to get these books for yourself so that you can either agree or disagree with me, they're really cheap. I mean, if you have a Kindle, they're even cheaper still. And so to summarise what has already been a much longer video than I intended for it to be, is the grass really greener when moving from 40k to Battletech? And the answer is... And you can start throwing bread at the screen now. Maybe? And it's one of those questions that is really hard for me to answer definitively because I don't cover all three of those criteria. Whilst I might take in an absolute ton of 40k lore and I might paint an absolute ton of 40k minis, playing 40k has not really been a thing that I super love for quite some time now. In fact, Pretty much since 9th edition came out, I've already been looking at other alternate games because I just don't really enjoy this edition. So to my mind, of course Battletech feels like a winner because I prefer smaller model counts, I love deep lore, I'm a huge fan of Battletech's video games which are actually really good and could probably be a video in their own right. But the point is that these things that I love and find great about Battletech they might not be true for you. The real answer is, to be honest, if you love 40k and everything that surrounds it, there's no shame in that and you shouldn't be made to feel bad for it. It is a sprawling universe brought to life with beautifully detailed miniatures. There's a lot to like there. But in that same hand, whether it's because you feel like GW have eroded so much of your good faith that you can't enjoy their products anymore, or whether you're just one of those people who likes to expand their horizons like myself, you also shouldn't be made to feel bad or like you're doing something wrong for wanting to look at other games. At the end of the day, in terms of things like the miniatures, the lore, the painting, the battle systems, all of this stuff that we've been discussing today, there's still some subjectivity there that only you can decide whether or not you like. However, the one thing that I have to say I feel like is objectively impossible to question is the differences in how the two games are distributed, where it's very plain to see to me that Battletech is leaps and bounds ahead of 40k. And it's that more human approach that they take to their customers and their colleagues, the other companies that they work with, that has made me so quickly, so deeply and so completely fall in love with the Battletech universe. So thank you so much everyone for taking the time to watch this one. Please don't forget to like and share this video and to subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date as I'm releasing new content to YouTube. Until the next one folks, I'd like to wish you happy hobbying and I will be back with more soon. I'll see you in the next one and bye bye for now.